my mission was really big on seeking revelation for like you just gotta seek revelation and the Lord will tell you and um, I was praying one time with my companion we'd always do like this we would pray and then we'd like pause for a little bit and we just think and then we'd come back together and a lot of times I felt like it was kind of just like just go forward and work and it's gonna work out like I'll leave them to you, you to them but a couple of times on the mission I got direct answers and every time it was just a really spiritual experience I remember one time we were just we were seeking for the elect and then we were praying about it and we had this huge map and after the prayer me and my companion just looked at each other and we were just like this place right here right yeah yeah this place and that was the place and we both had it and it was just like it was crazy to have your prayer answered like that there's this man named Takahashi Takahashi-san he um so is in my first area and he I went in with my trainer to church and she told me a little bit about him every so often like yeah he's kind of crazy he calls every so often like really late at night and he's like meet me at the church I need to like talk to you I have all these like feelings so he's kind of like crazy and so we go to church one week and he he comes we convince him to come and he walks in and he looks kind of like <laughs> I didn't watch anime a lot before my mission but during my mission you kind of see a lot and he kind of looked like one of those characters. He had like the crazy hair. And he had this like crazy all black outfit. And it was like swooped over on one side. So he's kind of just like, like looked really dark. And he like walks in and I'm like, um. <laughs> and so he comes in and like everyone in the ward kind of has a stereotype about him. He like, they all love him. But he's kind of like crazy. And we're sitting at church and it's like in the middle of someone's talk. And he just starts twitching like convulsing, like crazily. And I'm like looking at my companion like, we need to do something, like he's having like a seizure or something. And she's like, don't worry about it. He just does that. And like everyone in the ward is like straight faced and like, uh-huh. <laughs> and so I'm like, okay. And like, so he just does that. And he had all these problems. And I think I just thought he had mental problems. And so I would constantly teach him, but I was looking for the elect. And in my mind, he was not the elect because he didn't really, he didn't look like it. And so, but I felt like I'm a missionary and I'm going to show him that I love him and that the Lord loves him. And we would meet with him a lot and it was usually just to help him get a job. We went searching over dumpster areas to find him a bike. He, um, he got so much help from the like members, but I just thought, man, this guy's just sucking all I can get, you know? And then, but slowly he started changing. And like his spirit completely changed, his countenance totally changed, and then he cut his hair. And then he decided to wear uh, suits one day to church. And he walked in and everyone in the church was like, oh, who's that? Who's that? No way. <laughs> and he got baptized and started converting, like, like talking to all of his friends about this great gospel and how much he loves the Lord. And I remember leaving the area and talking to people who were in that area and I'd be like, okay, so how's Takahashi Kyodai doing? Like, how is he doing? And then he'd be like, oh man, he's the strongest member. He's giving us like referrals left and right. And then I would tell them like, you would never believe what he was like. And like, they would be like, no, not him. He's like the perfect member. And I just, I can personally not believe that I ever thought that he was not the elect person. I remember one time we were like having dinner with these this girl that we wanted to become an investigator and then this African American man and this Moroccan man and like we kind of got into the situation and we both like turned to each other and we were like we shouldn't be here like the spirit just felt wrong and so we were like contriving of all these ways that we could get out of there because they were all drunk and we did not know that and they were just like they kept drinking and things were getting a little scary and I remember like my companion was trying to put like this fake like buzz on our phones so someone would fake call us and like they kept like saying creepy things to us and I remember just thinking we need to get out of here we need to get out of here so then I <laughs> I like was like I don't feel good <laughs> I was like I need to go to the bathroom and so I went to the bathroom and I like said this like quick prayer and then I just had this like distinct feeling like you need to like fake throw up <laughs>
<laughs> and so then I started making these noises and I like it came out and I was like, yeah, like I'm really not doing okay. And they like, we're all like, are you okay? Like, are you okay? And I was like, yeah, like, no, I, yeah, I'm not feeling so good. I need to go like, I'm not like condoning lying, <laughs> but like me and my companion were like, yep. Yeah, she's not doing good. We need to go. And I remember we were just like racing away on our bikes, like giggling. And we were just like, oh man, that was the scariest experience. It was like one of those EFY videos where they like, there's that girl at the party and she's like being tempted by all of her friends and things are getting hazy. Yeah. <laughs>